Awesome. We are live and this is working finally. I have a bit of a new setup today. Um, I hope whoever's watching you can hear and see me okay. Uh, if you are watching live, please let me know in the chat box. Uh, feel free to leave questions throughout the stream. Um, leave your thoughts, basically, if you have any questions and I'll get to them as we go through the stream. Uh, but yeah, welcome to, to tonight's live stream. I'm going to talk about um, entrepreneurship and networking. And I'm going to delve into some tips and um, techniques, maybe you can call it, from Herb Trawick from Pensado's Place. I'm sure you know about him. And also Bobby Osinski, who's sort of a, a legend in the music industry community. He has a lot of knowledge, has his own podcast too. Um, and these two guys were on the podcast... Bobby was on a podcast last year. Herb was on a written interview um, two years-ish, year and a half. Uh, I'll leave a link to those in the description below. Um, but let's delve into, or let's listen to Bobby's advice on networking. Um, and let's start there and then we get into Herb and we can dissect some of these tips. Um, but let's start out listening to Bobby Osinski on networking. You know, here's the thing about networking. I was never really good at it. I'm still not really good at it. But I understand why you need to do it. So much of the music business is based on relationships. And the ones that have the relationships are the ones that work and see their careers progress. There are so few people in the business that are truly brilliant. There are some. But most, you know, we're all the same for the most part. Um, so what separates people is the fact if you're not one of those brilliant ones, which you probably aren't, what separates everybody is what their network is and how what people they know and how they get to know them. And what I've found is a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is the people that stay with it and are persistent are the ones that end up. I, I don't want to say they become stars, some do, but they become successful in the business. They, they work. And for many people, that's all they want. They just want a job in the music business and they want, and they want it to be a good job and it, and definitely that can happen, but you have to hang in there and, and that's not easy sometimes, especially when you're starting. It's, it's never easy for anybody to get in the business. Uh, except for a few people. I mean, some you know, we all hear the stories about, about people that that happens immediately to them and their instant success. But most people are not like that. So I think that's a big thing. Uh, the, the next thing is sort of how to network. And I've heard all sorts of really good ways to do it. Probably the best was, and I cannot think of his name, but he's the musical director for Alicia Keys. I just can't think of his name. And when he went to New York, he didn't know anybody, but he kept on hearing about parties, industry parties. So he'd go to every party. And when he'd go there, he'd walk around to every person and just say, hi, just say, hello. That would be it. Hi, how you doing? Walk away. And he did this for about a year. And finally, everybody thought they knew him. Because he was always there, I always say hi to him. And then finally, one guy said, "Wait, wait, wait! Stop! Come over here, talk to me. You know, who, who are you? What, what do you do?" And he, he said he told him he was um, a musician and um, a writer. And the guy happened to be an A and R guy from Columbia. And he said, "Well, meet me in my office on Monday morning, and let's hear what you have." And Monday afternoon, he was in the studio. And I'm not sure if he was working with, with P. Diddy or, you know, somebody like – he was working with a big artist from that. It took him a while, and then next thing you know, he's working with Alicia Keys, but a whole bunch of, of R&B and, and hip-hop people from New York, and that became his career. But it started from very innocent, you know, just saying hello to everybody. And I always thought that was that was a, a great way to do it. Um, that's a great story um, that Bobby tells about the guy who um, goes into all these parties and says hello to everybody. 
But I think the most important thing with what Bobby is saying is that you have to play the long game, so to speak. Um, for example, that guy was mentioning it took him a, a year, maybe took maybe less, maybe took more. Um, but he's saying a year. He just started with saying hello, uh, kept doing it, consistent with it, and eventually it paid off. And I think that's the moral of that story. And this is what I try to teach too is it's all about building relationships essentially uh, and playing the long game because it's not enough just going to one party and saying hello, obviously. You need to go to multiple parties, um, meeting the same people and being consistent with it. And I think that's if the secret. There's no secret really, but that's if there's a secret, that's a secret. Um, so that that's the moral of the story as I take it. Um, it's really fascinating to see that that's how people do it and hopefully that can encourage you to start networking just say simple hello and it doesn't have to be you have, you don't have to go to these major music business parties you can apply the same method when you reach out to bands online or when you go see a band um, play a show for example that's what I did um, that's what I still do with bands that I talk to online um, I developed a relationship it takes time but that's what it takes to get hired in this business. And there's so many stories that I myself have, and I bet you guys have the same, like the relationships that are worth uh, keeping or the relationship that gives you uh, money that hire you or the relationships that you have developed for the longest time. Um, so it's really fascinating. Um, let's get into what Herb had to say on the topic. Um, this is a, a, a text or there was written interview. So I'm going to show you, read a text to you here and let's delve into it. You should see it on the left hand side of the screen, which is that way, this way. <laughs> um, let's get through it. So this is her uh, on networking. Uh, this is what he said on the topic. He said, today networking has become automated and technology has made everybody network but they don't network in the same way. For example, if you and I got in, uh, got in touch through social media, it's not the same as you and I sitting down and getting to know each other. And I want to come back to this point after I read this text, because um, it's important. And then it continues, or it's harder to be able to customize a project, get your philosophy, etc. It's not that you can't do it online, but most people have shorter, briefer interactions there. I think a lot more people are connected online, but are not necessarily communicating. At the end of the day, particularly with the arts, you have to find some way to communicate and connect at the same time. Connecting can, can get a lot done, but it can also short, short, short change, sorry, some of the processes that might give you some in, insight as a producer, artist, a business owner. Um, things that you need to have to make the best kind of decision. And this, in, in the Client Booster course, for the people who have uh, taken that course, this is what I teach in there. Um, this is why it's so important that when you do talk to artists online uh, and in real life, that you invite them to a Skype call or a phone call. Uh, they can read this box. Uh, but yeah, that's why it's so important that you invite them to call or a meeting because that's when you get to know the deeper side of why they want a record done, why they want to have a record mixed. Um, that's where you find out by taking the connection you made on social media to the next level. And that's why it becomes so much easier um, to send them a better business proposal uh, that is tailored to their needs. And you can't do that by just going from, a, from your communication on social media, whether that's a chat or just... Um, commenting on their posts, for example. Um, let me just have a sip of water. It's really warm. Um, and I'm glad Herb made that point, and that's also what I'm trying to teach you guys when you do reach out to clients. You have to get them on a Skype or a phone call or a meeting. In this next um, paragraph with Herb, he confirms that basically um, on the topic of Skype, uh, he says, yes, because you can't ignore utilizing your tool. Not everybody lives in Los Angeles, New York, Nashville, London, whatever. Uh, but they all don't necessarily have to either. So utilize your tools, but try to find a way to connect beyond that. 
not only is it good for your business, uh, it's good for you as a human being to keep those skills developed. Um, and this is also a really important point with living in this internet age, is that it doesn't really matter where you live, you can work with bands worldwide. Like that's how I work with bands in Canada or the US or Leicester in England. I, I, I would never go to Leicester, I would never move to Leicester to work there um, or live there, but I don't have to either because, because of the internet and because of Skype, because of it's so easy to connect with people, you don't have to. And that's what's so amazing with living in the internet age. Um, so take advantage of it. Reach out to bands even though they live across the globe. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you live as long as you can develop meaningful relationships. Uh, and also I'm going to get into what Herb said about the entrepreneurial side of running or being a musician, engineer, producer. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, but essentially is if Herb you know, in the importance of entrepreneurship. Um, and he said, I think it is when you're in the music business, which is a very entrepreneurial business anyway, uh, you almost can't help it, whether you have or don't have a knack for it. Uh, however, there are very successful people in the arts who are not entrepreneurial, and there are people who are. It's not a pro prerequisite, but you have to understand that if you're making your own music and putting yourself, putting it out there yourself, or trying to find a manager or being hired as an engineer based on your credits, you are an entrepreneur. Uh, you're in it whether you want to or not. It's not for everybody, but it's a particular entrepreneurial driven business. And you should be aware of it and consignant that it comes with some responsibility. Um, this is what I encourage you guys to do as well, is get into the whole business side of running your studio, read books, I know I gave you some tips on books I have read that's been very helpful. Um, so learn more about it, read about business. There's a book that I thought was really helpful when I started-ish. Um, it's called E-Myth, a uh, terrific book. It teaches you why you have to spend time building a business rather than working on it. And especially us as engineers, producers, musicians, it's super helpful if you want a career make a living doing audio and music. Um, but that's it for today's video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it can inspire you to take some action. Um, take some action. Even though we're in this annoying coronavirus times, everything is shut down, less bands to work with, but still learn and try to do your best. I'm sure the outcome is going to be good. Um, and also for people who are watching this afterwards, feel free to leave uh, comments in the comment section below. And also uh, for new watchers, there's a free guide. If you're a home studio owner, a freelancer, and want to increase your client base, there's a free guide that's called Three Tested Ways to Increase Your Client Base. And in this guide, you can learn my tested email script of how to contact bands online, um, get clients uh, offline or in real life, so to speak, and also how to get clients coming back for more. Again, made this for home studio owners and freelancers who wants to increase their client base. Check it out, it's free. The link is also in the description below. But it was a pleasure seeing you guys tonight. And I will see you guys uh, next week again. So take care.